Good morning and welcome back to beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. We're here on day two of Dell Tech World and the floor is buzzing. My name is Savannah Peterson, you're watching theCUBE. Very delighted to be joined at this show by Dave Vellante. Dave, what a great morning we get yeah, to Yeah, you know, together. Dell is often criticized for lack of innovation. Well, guess what? That That's is history. not the case I this mean, there's week. a lot of innovation here this week. So. And, and speaking of innovation and some of their most innovative partners, I'm very excited to welcome to the show a CUBE, a true CUBE veteran and one of my favorite guests, Jazz Tremblay. Thank you so much for being here with us from Broadcom. Thank you for having me. How's the show going for you? It's busy. The show's very busy and it's yeah. very exciting, I think. People need help and guidance on this AI transition and they're here to learn and figure out what the plans are. That is for sure, and there's a lot of people collaborating. You've brought some fun props for us. You had some big announcements. Let's talk hardware for a second. What did Broadcom and Dell announce this week? So we're all about, there's two parts of our AI strategy. The one part is we do custom accelerator for hyperscalers. The other part is we do connectivity for merchant silicon. So scale up fabrics, scale out fabrics, front end, back end, mm -hmm. the whole interconnect piece from switching silicon all the way to optics. And what a lot of customers are looking for is a complete cluster. They turn to Dell for that, and we, in hand, help Dell with all the connectivity piece. So it's a match made in heaven. So Charlie Kawas on the keynote yes. today, I, I call it a master class. You know, we, we fir it really was. We first yeah. got a, a deep taste of that at MWC this year, and then again at your facility in San Jose. He said, the GPU is the brain and the network is the heart. And you guys play both in the front end and the back end of the network with the same silicon, yes. right? Explain why that's important. So, it starts with the workloads. So the AI workloads, a lot of these are called, and I, like Charlie mentioned, the elephant workloads, they span beyond multiple clusters and even for some multiple data centers, you can't fit all the workload in one data center, you're limited from a power perspective. So picture spanning across hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, or even hundreds of thousands of GP GPUs, you need to have all that interconnected. And the industry is um, standardizing on a way to interconnect that. With It starts with your AI server that has, we talked about this last time, mm -hmm. has a dozen GP GPUs, a dozen NICs, dozens of NVMe drives, and you need to build an internal fabric for that, which is based on PCIe, and we participate mm -hmm. there. Then you've got your scale-out network, which is Ethernet-based, where you need to have Ethernet NICs, Ethernet switches, and then your uh, front-end network, Ethernet-based again, and then your scale-up network to interconnect all the GP GPUs. So, uh, it sounds simple when I explain it, but there's a lot of networking technology that you need to uh, build this up. So going from compute server to an AI data center world, the complexity and scope of connectivity goes up. Exponentially. Exponentially. And just so people understand, Broadcom doesn't build the GPUs, the CPUs, the, you, you build all the connections that make them work together and connect to the high bandwidth memory which of course everybody knows is what's powering AI. Yes. That's your business. You're not competing for GPU, CPU, NPU business. You're enabling. So we, we have a business that does custom chips. Yes. And some of those custom chips are cloud-based, proprietary GP GPUs, but those are custom chips. From a standard product perspective, it's the connectivity piece. Right, so right. we want to enable open connectivity, build standard products, that allow you to connect anybody's type of GP, GPU, AI infrastructure, and we think that's really important. It's a central nervous system, continuing the brain and the heart analogy, or the, the spinal fluid, the central nervous system that's connecting all of these various we hope so, yeah. pieces together. Let, let's talk a little bit more about your role there and how Broadcom's helping realize this open ecosystem that we heard in the keynote. So, open is very important to us because we feel people need choices, uh, they need options and freedom to be able to build up the architecture that they want, and that can only be en enabled with open. There's multiple things that go into open, but fundamentally, if you don't have open standards for connectivity, the rest cannot be open. Right. Uh, we've been doing open for decades. We you know, perfected the art of open in the compute server. Think of a compute server, it's got a CPU that has got 
hundreds of different peripherals, and they all work together like magic. You can plug in different things, complete abstractions from software to hardware. It's a true open ecosystem from a technology perspective and a business perspective. We need to do the same thing with AI, and we're, we know how to do it. We're already doing it. If you look at Dell, the XC9680, um, uh, it supports multiple type of GPUs, multiple types of NIC, multiple type of CPUs. You can mix and match different mm -hmm. components. That's what we feel people want and we want to be part of. You're core part of the Lego set, really. Exactly, yes. And speaking of fun toys, can you tell us about some of the show and tell that you brought here for us? We've got a few things. I'm excited! So this is the product that uh, we've had for about a year. Dell launched yesterday. It's the Tomahawk 5 51 terabits per second Ooh. switch. And as Charlie mentioned during his keynote, this is a monolithic die. So single chip, 51 terabits, and that's really important from a power and a latency perspective. Now doing this in a single chip is not easy. There's a lot of technical challenges. Mm -hmm. But what we're seeing right now in the industry is because of AI, people are pushing the boundaries. Basically, they're asking us to build the biggest chips that you can technically build. So that's one. The other product that we announced yesterday is the 400 gig Ethernet NIC Thor 2. Nice. So um, this, we've been working on this for many years, and we talked about open. So this NIC, first of all, this form factor, it's available in multiple form factor. This is an open compute form factor. Yeah. So when we talk about open, we know how to do open, open compute, plug this in a standard open compute slot. Mm -hmm. This will work with uh, any type of operating system you want and any type of GPGPU. So we qualify this with multiple GPGPU solutions. Um, the other thing is from a power perspective, this is the world's first five nanometer Thor 2 NIC. Now a lot of people tell me GPU is consuming hundreds and hundreds of watts and you're spending all this effort to save 10 watts. Well, it makes a difference and that's one of the key things. So we need a different mindset around power. Mm -hmm. Every watt counts. Cooling these, powering these is important. So this, this one is really optimized for power. Five nanometer technology. The other thing is when you use these two devices together, you can interconnect them with a five meter direct attached copper cable. So you don't need optics. Right, wow. So if you compare this solution versus the competition, you go five meter copper, five nanometer. It's a focused product, it doesn't support InfiniBand, it's pure play Ethernet, mm -hmm. just the features you need for AI, all hardware accelerated, so we're more than half the power. And, and, and by supporting copper, you save cost. You want to uh, 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 avoid optics where you can, right? Yes. You use the optics only when it's necessary. So you save cost, Absolutely. save power. The other thing that a lot of people are starting to realize is picture that we have an AI server here. It's an oven. Optics don't like heat. Yeah. There's a very strong correlation between optics reliability and the temperature at which you operate mm. them. So being on this car that's low power helps, but you want to do everything you can to keep optics out of the, uh, out of the AI. So before point. you go to the next one, the, the Open Compute is, the, is the, face, the, the Facebook slash Meta standard, right, but years ago, right? The Open Compute standard? Yes, right. it started with Meta, yes. It, which is interesting because now, of course, Llama, Mm -hmm. is, the open, That's a great point, Dave. is the open LLM yeah. that yeah. is sort of, that Facebook or Meta is putting out there, and so it's a similar mm -hmm. playbook, but yes. really around LLMs. So. I was actually there about 12, 13 years ago when Mark Zuckerberg had launched OCP. I was yeah. in the room with him, it was like 80 people. Very cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, what I still moment. remember that, and we're like, is this going to pick up? And it's become, for data center, the key event. It's shown the world that open is important. And what you said, Dave, is very important because what we've done for hardware is being done in AI for software, and it's being done from the get-go. So a lot of the uh, AI software is from the ground up open. Right, and theCUBE was at the first OCP conference. I spoke on stage no kidding. with George Schlesman. Yeah. Oh my God, cool. So, yeah, who's a data center operator, anyway. So this is a I moment for, for everybody. I mean, yeah, yeah, this, this is, is this big. is essentially a moment you've been thinking about for a very long time. We have. All the, coming together. Yeah. The, the ch challenge and, and pressure is Ooh. we got to do yeah. this amount of work and this amount of time. We got to go faster. Now, the, this eight tile this guy. beast. Ooh, this. Yeah. So we talked about power. Okay, so picture that you have this device, Tomahawk 5, with 128 
lanes of 400 gig, uh, 120 ports of 400 gig Ethernet, you would have 128 optical transceivers in some cases. So what this does with silicon photonics is integrates in the chip, at the silicon level, the optics with the switch. And this is sampling to customers now. So this is pretty cool innovation, That's and impressive. the goal is to reduce power by 70%. You also take components out, you take out latency, so less is, is, is more. Less is absolutely more, and 70% is no small figure when it comes to power reduction. How, how frequently is power coming up as a conversation? You're, selling, you're saying you're already selling this into customers. So, Jeff Clark shared the new industry data point this morning. He said by 2030, we would need 8x the power being consumed today by data centers. That is scary. And that's only a couple years away. Yes. So example, uh, for my team, we're upgrading the labs for AI infrastructure. And the lead times to get simple power in our labs in Colorado Springs from the utilities is 12 months. So oh, power yeah. is becoming the most important item. It comes up in every conversation. It's no longer about the chip shortage, it's about the power. Yeah, he said if we'll need 520 gigawatts of power by 2030. I mean, I don't know what the, we were talking yesterday about the largest data center in the world. I guess there's one out here, Switch is like right. 600 megawatts. Most data centers are, you know, maybe 100, 125. If they're, right? yeah. If that, and yeah. we, need, we need 520 gigawatts yeah. to power this AI era. That's 8X, that's Our amazing. role in that is we, we're over-engineering products from a power efficiency perspective to do our part. Doesn't solve the problem, but we, we need to do everything we can. Well, and you're preparing for when everyone's pulling from this in, in, you know, in 2030 when the whole world is leveraging this. If we're not optimizing the power now, we're in a world of hurt. And it's just not going to work, quite frankly. When you were getting on the stage today, I, I, this is a, a wild card here. When you were getting on the stage today, you mentioned that your daughter enjoys my Rubik's Cube earrings. She does, yes. So I'm very curious, Jez, when you talk to your daughter, for example, at the yes. dinner table about AI, yes. how's the next gen feeling about all of this? What's, what's the conversation include? So, um, they use it for school. For My son has become a, 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 an expert at ChatGPT, helping him with his homework. He's 14. He's a pro prompt engineer at this stage, <laughs> yes, I Yes, he's very good at that. Uh, my daughter is a little bit less a user, but uh, yeah, both of them uh, see the potential it has. It's exciting. And it's such a good research assistant. I, I was playing around with Copilot the other day, playing with my new Dell laptop here in anticipation of the show, and the fact that it can access JSTOR and all these different things that took forever when we were all in school trying to research things. Yes. There's so much information at everybody's yes. fingertips. And, and you know, we, al we always talk about how this is early days, like remember dial-up? Yeah, yeah. We talk about dial-up. Yes. I think Charlie said that the world is trying to get to AGI, which will, which mm -hmm. will require a million GPUs to be connected. That's like, the, the moonshot goal. That's the moonshot, yes. Which you don't really know exactly how to get there, I take it, but you, you sort of no, on the path, you do know how to get we there. We know how to get there. We just we don't have the technology today, but you know it's going to be there. So we can get very close to that. We, Ethernet is the most scalable protocol, and by scalability there is the, the connectivity, the performance, but also the resiliency. Remember we talked about optics, how they fail? Well, how does a network react to that? When you're doing this at scale, it's very important. But we, uh, we're building the technology and we're contributing it to open standards like Ultra Ethernet Consortium and there's some new things we'll be announcing this, this summer in terms of AI uh, consortium. So Ethernet will be the path, we know that. That it Ethernet is. will be the path, is the path to get to a million GPUs yes. connected. Yes, it's a path to open, it's a path to performance. Ethernet is 50 years old. And it's That's the, crazy to it's, think about. It is, yeah. Wow. And it's still a, it's stronger than ever, and we're fully uh, committed to it. But the, you know, you talked about the user experience and so forth. These AI technologies need performance to be immersive. And uh, latency, scale are important characteristics to make the technology adopted. So not only do we need low power, but we need it to be fast and responsive and all that stuff, and it's not easy to do that at scale. Amazing technical challenges that you guys are going after. I mean, you're an engineering company at heart, right? <laughs> we saw it in San Jose, yeah. the, demo, the demo room. It was, it was quite, quite astounding. 
at the financial analyst yeah. meeting. And we're, uh, we're kind of a behind the scenes technology company. We've never been really out in the open, but with AI, feedback from customers is they want to hear what we're doing, and our ecosystem partners need a little bit of direction to say, what's the connectivity fabric's going to be? How can we tie into that? So one of the big shifts in the past year is people wanted building AI accelerators. It was all about the AI accelerator and wrapping systems and architecture around that. If you fast forward today, and companies like Dell are like, we need to provide an infrastructure, AI servers, connectivity, cluster, where technology can, can meet. So there's much more recognition that we live in an open ecosystem and we need to all work together on this. I, one of the things I find most remarkable about this particular technological revolution compared to some of the other ones that we've lived through is the culture of collaboration around it. Even just seeing everyone on the keynote yesterday, so many different players, you're all very involved with the keynote today as well, it's different. It feels different. And you can tell that there's this kind of, at least I sense this uncertainty but extreme excitement about how exactly our finalized solutions are going to end up here when we get yeah. to scale. And um, so I'm curious, you started to tease a little bit about some announcements coming in the summer. Yes. What can you tell us about what lies ahead now that these are out in the market? So, this year is the year of building it. So customers are like, and you talked about feeling different. One of the reasons it feels different is many of these technology transitioners, like technologists and companies coming together, says, let's build it and they will come. This is no. not what's happening. <laughs> People are lining up, they're here, they want to spend money, they want to be part of it, mm -hmm. and they're literally pulling the industry. And the industry's coming together and saying, customers are there, let's work together. So it's really the, the year of building it, the year where the level of collaboration that I'm personally doing with other technology companies is like never before. Mm. And it's fun, because we can take our R&D, as their R&D, work together on solutions. So, uh, yeah, it's exciting, it's fun. It I is think, exciting. You know, it, it's not a zero-sum game, really, the industry. It's no. so large yes. that a dollar to Broadcom doesn't mean that somebody else is going to lose a dollar. It actually might create three dollars. Our level rises together when we yeah, innovate, collaborate. There's enough opportunity for everybody, yeah. and we, this is hard stuff. We need to make it work, we need to make it accessible, we need to drive the cost out, we need to drive options, and just build it. Yeah. Just build it. What, what, what a great note to end on. <clears throat> okay, last question for you, because yes. I know I asked you this when we were at Supercomputing, and I might see you at Supercomputing again in Atlanta later this year. Next time we meet, what do you hope to be able to say that you can't yet say today? Um, so, we, so we talked about Ethernet being the open standard for scale out. Mm -hmm. We are going to be driving open standards for scale up. We gave you a preview of that in December last year at the AMB event, right. and there'll be more information coming on that. Exciting, well we will stay tuned. Jess, always a pleasure to have you. Thank, Thank you so you much for having me. Great to have Our you. Pleasure. Perfect start to the day. Dave, very excited to spend the rest of the day with you. you and too. stay tuned at home folks, we've got Michael Dell as well as many fantastic guests on day two here at Dell Tech World in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.